Hello and welcome to the YXT Podcast. My name is Jason and I will be your x-ray tech for today. So, decided to do this uh, live. This one will be titled Radiology 2023 Predictions. I'm going to go ahead and give a minute for some people to join in on the on the live here. Welcome, welcome. For those of you that are maybe new to the Instagram or Facebook, uh, my name is Jason Hernandez. I am a radiologic technologist. <laughs> Slash instructor, been in the field for over 12 years. Um, but yeah, uh, radiology is definitely something I enjoy doing. It's a passion of mine. Hello, welcome. We got Kamala on here. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, so today's uh, topic is going to be 2023 predictions, right? So we're closing out the year. Hopefully, it's been a good year for you, and, and hopefully, there's things to look forward to next year. So, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and talk a little bit about the predictions, what I feel, you know what to expect for next year. With radiology in general, the field is, is very fast paced. It's always been, you know, fast paced. There's new things going on, all that kind of stuff. That, that's what makes this field exciting. And I don't think any of that's gonna slow down anytime soon. I think we're still on that trajectory of, you know, new technology, uh, new systems, new software, new hardware, um, you know, advancements within certain modalities you know so you know increase in demand of, of some of these studies and modalities I believe that's still gonna happen you know so those of you that are in radiology uh, again I always say you chose a great field if you're maybe watching this and you're thinking about radiology you know you know th there's a lot of options and this is probably one of the good options um, there's a lot of things changing very rapidly, uh, artificial intelligence has taken over, you know, a lot of other industries, you know, AI is involved in radiology, but I think it's there to help us. So I don't think there's any like threat on, you know, jobs getting, you know, replaced by AI, anything like that anytime soon. So I think we're good on, on that end. So things are moving very quickly in this field and you know, that it's a good thing. As a technologist or somebody who's interested in the field, I think you have to be ready to adapt for whatever's coming. If you have any questions, I'll get to your questions uh, at the end of this. So feel free to pop in some questions. Okay, so let's get to the to the predictions, right? So currently, you know, the way things look like at this point, there's a lot of talk about short staffed, you know, facilities. Uh, specifically in, in the radiology department. Now, is that going to carry on over to 2023? Yes, I believe so. But at some point, that problem is going to get solved. That, that short staff problem will eventually get solved. So it's a good problem right now because if you are a technologist or you're coming out into the field soon, that means there's probably some opportunities waiting for you, right? And, and that's a good thing. Right, you you hope that you go through all this stress and sacrifice, and hopefully there's something waiting for you. So, I do believe in early 2023 there's still going to be the short staff problem, not only in X-ray and ultrasound, but in MRI. Maybe not all the modalities, but for those big ones, I believe that problem's still going to be there. So, why is there a short staff problem in a lot of places? You know, I think it's a, it, it's for a number of reasons, right? One being maybe those facilities are struggling to find, you know, the right technologist or, or a technologist period, um, because those that are practicing already have a job and probably already settled and like where they're at right now. So a lot of these facilities are short staffed for that reason, but also because you know the the demand is increasing i think more and more procedures are being ordered and it, it's it, it's there's a struggle to keep up you know okay we have this equipment we have the patients but we don't have the technologists to perform the exams so we're gonna just kind of stretch out the text that we do have so it's kind of a problem but it's a good problem because that means there's a demand in, in the job but those of you interested in the field or coming into the field 
you know, keep in mind this is still a competition and you still have to get licensed. So nothing's guaranteed when it comes to jumping on those opportunities. I think it's still competitive, especially nowadays that the field is more, you know, before people didn't really know about radiology, but I think with social media, I think now it's starting to get familiar. I think more and more people are getting um, or finding out about radiology, and that's a great thing. That, that was the goal, right? You know, now you have TikTok, you have Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. You have all these creators, all these technologists doing great things for the field, and it's kind of highlighting the field. So there's more and more people moving towards radiology. So there might be a shortage in text, but I think that problem is eventually going to get solved. Um, but to overcome or to to benefit, um, you know, put in the work, put in the work, you know, treat it as a competition, put your best foot forward and all that good stuff, you know, um, and, and you'll be able to, to find some opportunities in, in, in this field. Another reason for the short staff, too, is because I think some of these employers are just trying to stretch out their people, you know, and that's kind of been the story of radiology you know, it's okay, let's get one person to do multiple things, right? And oh, if they could do patients in 20 minutes, maybe they could do 15 minutes. And if they could see this number of patients, maybe we could increase that by this much more, right? So it depends on the facilities too and your employers, you know, so busy is good, get it while it's good. You know, if you're getting good hours, hopefully you're getting good pay, but also, you know, everybody has a, a breaking point and a limit, you know, so if you feel you're short staffed, if you feel you need some help, I, I think you should speak up. You know, you go to school, you work hard, and you're still human, you know, so you want to be able to put in that work, get paid for it, but you don't want to, you know, uh, break, you know, or burn out. So, um, and I'm going to get to these questions too. So any advice on coming into the field? Any tips? I'm starting school in January, and I've been out of school for a while. I've been doing the LMRT program. Cool. Thank you. Uh, con ganas, Anna. Yeah, thank you for that question. So I'm, I'm going to answer a couple of those. So any advice coming to the field? Yes, you chose a great field. Uh, it's not an easy field, so be ready for the challenges um, that are involved, including you know patient care, working with the equipment, the physics, the math anatomy you know so it's not going to be easy but again as I was talking about in the, in, in the beginning there's opportunities so you know put in that work hopefully there's something waiting for you um, after all the hard work and, and sacrifice um, but don't think it's going to be easy though um, so study read reads a big one um, there's a lot of great books and sources there's a lot of good videos too out there and other content but you know you can't just limit yourself to certain tools the books are great and just kind of expand uh, your tools uh, I have a few tools available on my website yourxraytech.com check it out that way it could uh, help you be successful I'm starting school in January and I've been out of school for okay so you know just make sure when you start that you get things lined up whatever that is in life you know take care of whatever you gotta take care of because this program is going to take up um, time and energy, you know, so, so be ready to, to put in that. You know, some people need to put more time than others. And if you feel you're struggling, you know, there are some things that are pretty tough in this field. But don't hesitate to ask questions. Uh, make the most of your program. Get as much hands-on as you can and, and, and read. Okay, so let me get back to the 2023 predictions, right? Um, so there's always a concern about, you know, because in some places you're probably not seeing as many opportunities as other places. So there's always a concern of, of the field getting flooded, right? Too many techs, not enough jobs, things like that. Um, for 2023, that could potentially happen, right? There's always that potential. Um, but I don't think at the beginning. When it comes to opportunities, you want to jump on those opportunities and jump on them early and don't think, oh, there'll be another one, or let me check out something else. Like, sometimes you, you just got to jump on opportunities, and then from there, see where it goes. I don't think there's talks of, of the field being flooded yet, 
not at the beginning of 2023, but you know things could change towards the end. Uh, again, because the field is getting more uh, recognition. In the case that it could, I don't want to say get flooded, but there's not as much opportunities towards the end of the year. You know, how do you stand out? Like, how do you get into those opportunities? All right, so x-ray, ultrasound, a lot of these uh, modalities, they're based on skill. So continue working on your skill. Like, practice, practice, practice. Get as much experience as you can, and it'll show. You don't have to tell people that you're experienced. I mean, they could see it. You know, your patients could see it. You know, the other techs could see it. You know, whoever else that's working with you can see it. So just keep working on your skill. Don't let that go. Um, and just try to get better, continue learning. Let's talk about pay a little bit. So this is a field that, again, there's a demand, there's a short staff. Know your worth. You know, don't don't take something that's too low, but don't expect something too crazy either. I mean, if you're coming out with no experience, don't expect a high number. You know, jump in there, learn a few things first. Just know your worth um, and things will work out. If we get a lot of techs going out there, taking low offers, taking low offers, it's going to affect the bigger picture. So, you know, it's okay to ask around, you know, um, especially at your area, like what they're making more or less in, in that area, at, at that scope, with that much experience, with those modalities, you know, find out that information. And sure, Google will give you some information, but you're better off reaching out to actual individuals and, and, and you know, getting a more or less and why and also keep in mind right now inflation things are going up in price you know so you got to make a living so definitely consider that um, again predictions for 2023 opportunities are going to go to those um, who bring more to the table so my advice would be you know learn more earn more this field has so much room for opportunities and to grow but those opportunities are going to come to those who continue learning, who continue getting better. I've always stuck to that. Learn more, earn more, and you'll see. And don't be afraid to, to branch out either. So um, there's other modalities that you could branch out to. Maybe you're already interested in one, so now's the time to jump into that one. Or at least do some research on it, you know. Um, who's hiring, how many jobs. But there's a lot of facilities right now that could use multi modality techs um, or just a specialized text you know if you just want to do MRI you could do, just do MRI right but again put in the work get certified and you're going to get the most out of it you know um, any good books to read to prepare yourself very good so depends on, on what area you're trying to prepare yourself for because again the, the, the field and the program is vast you have patient care, you have anatomy, you have physics, you have math. So there's certain books for each category. So for example, if, if you're looking at uh, patient care, which a lot of people underestimate, that could be challenging in itself. Um, then there's a, a patient care and radiography book that you know has been around. There's several editions on it. Um, whether you have the latest or you have the previous edition, it's all good like the information doesn't change too much uh, on those additions but don't underestimate the patient care um, and usually those are straightforward reads when you read those books they're pretty easy to understand unlike some of the physics you could read those and, and you know those could be a little cons you know you might need some assistance some tutoring that's okay too but yeah there's plenty of good books and again I got some sources on my website yourxraytech.com that I could help you also offer tutoring things like that so um, but books are a very good source and thank you for that question and see Junior Ray Mora thank you thank you all right I work as an EBS in my hospital when I'm going to school to become a rad tech my hospital will reimburse me thank God oh awesome and you know that's been something that happens in this field a lot of times these hospitals if they know you already they want to keep you and that's going to continue in 2023 especially because these hospitals are competing against each other you know um, you might have 
another hospital down the road and they want a tech you know so instead of looking for one if there's already a potential one there they're gonna say let's get let's keep this person you know um and you know we'll reimburse you uh just stay here with us right um so yeah just think about it i mean it's a win-win situation really and yeah they'll let you know where they need you you know if they need you in ct then they're probably going to train you in ct and and so you know hopefully that's something you want to do be open to it um and just have those conversations you know and again be willing to put in the work because that's an investment on their side too they want to make sure they're investing in the right people you know so for them uh, it could pay off but it could pay off for you too so thanks for joining me by the way everybody I i'm answering questions i'm throwing out some 2023 predictions what are your predictions what do you think uh i'm writing my registry god willing uh next year awesome yes take it as soon as possible as soon as possible and focus on the areas that you're not very strong at you know some people like to just focus on the areas they're strong at or feel comfortable with they neglect the the tougher stuff and then you know you just everybody's exam is going to be different uh, everybody gets a, a different version so you want to make sure you're prepared for your um version of that that exam um and if you come out successful on the first attempt you know more power to you i mean that saves a lot of time and energy and, and money yeah so good luck on that and and if y'all have any questions you could also dm me on instagram i try to or my email your x-ray tech at gmail.com i want to do nursing but to be honest they'd be looking stressed stressed out uh, my radiology people always be cool calm yeah it's cool calm and collective even under stress and and that's something you need to 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 do you know um in fact um i think it's a necessity as a technologist that you need to remain calm and collective in stressful situations so again you know more opportunities for those type of individuals because our field can be stressful but you can't just go around showing it um the way i like to put it is like you can have a patient um er trauma situation and then your very next patient is like a, a, a walk-in, a walkie-talkie patient. Let's say they're six years old coming in because they need an x-ray for the hand, right? So you don't want to show them that you're stressed out and, you know, they deserve your time and your attention. And, you know, you still got that other patient to deal with. So it takes a certain person to be a technologist, you know. But I could always, you know, give some tips later on on how to deal with stressful situations. And, Okay, the MRAD physics <laughs> and psychological consequences of exposure are rough, low escort. Yeah, you know, uh, RAD physics, you know, it's no joke. Um, we get into the details, you know, how we create x-rays, what happens when x-rays interact with matter, you know, so the, the interactions, you have to be familiar with the science and terminology. Again, that's something I could help out with. Um, but I get it. I get it. It's, it's it could be tough, you know. And a lot of people could assume, oh, you just push buttons, uh, and it, your job looks easy. But now there's there's quite a bit behind it. Um, but it gets very interesting too. Um, all all the physics gets very interesting. Uh, even ultrasound has physics, right? Uh, MRI has physics. Uh, X-ray has physics. So there are a lot of great modalities great opportunities but not the easiest fields to get into um if you missed a live i'm gonna put this up on my podcast yxt podcast um i'll put out a few reels too um so make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel and all that good stuff um that lets me know what, what y'all are interested in and i got a, new, a lot of new content coming out for 2023 it's in the works a lot of connections, promo codes, and all that good stuff is coming up. Uh, what are good tips to do when you do get into your clinicals? That's a great question. All right, so first things first, right? You're going to want to introduce yourself. You know, make sure you're wearing your badge. Um, the earlier people know your name, the better. Because you don't just want to be another student. So, some of these 
um, places they deal with a lot of students and you know oh here's another one and again you want to be able to stand out um, so your name is a big one right um, and, and that's on day one you know the sooner you introduce yourself the better you know, another tip you know try to stay away from all the the office drama and things like that you know so every facility is gonna have a little bit of drama you know people have been working with each other for a while and this and that and you're just coming into that kind of stay on the neutral side or avoid it when you can um, try not to take sides with anybody uh, you don't want to put yourself in that position so try to avoid that as much as possible and and the best way to do that is stay busy stay busy like find something to do don't just stand around even if it's it's slow find something to do there, there's always something to do so yeah stay busy and don't wait for somebody to ask you to do something like ask you know hey you mind if I assist in this one can I jump in uh, can I take on this patient um, texts love that and they love for you to ask questions not all texts but if, if it shows that you're interested if you're showing us you're interested you're good and keep in mind you know these texts are working they're on the clock so um, some really enjoy being with students and others don't you know don't take it personal but it should be good and and, and get as much practice as, as possible you know so hopefully I answer that question okay hospital or urgent care you know that's a great question and, and it's awesome that there's options right so it depends on you right and and who's hiring um, so of course hospitals 24 hours usually three shifts if you're just starting off maybe you you'll get a PRN or maybe you're lucky enough to get one of those shifts um, with hospitals again you can have uh, more than likely you're gonna be on call so that's good money um, so yeah hospitals are, are always good urgent cares you know some some of those you know they have regular hours um, shorter staff not as much people so if you're looking for something that's not as fast paced but you're still in the field and you get to practice and you know that, that's a great option too so it really comes down to what you're interested in. and there's more options than that too you know it's not just hospitals and urgent care um, there's imaging centers there's mobile I did mobile there's education um, and there's clinics but if you're if you're to ask me hospital or urgent care um, I'm kind of old school I, I, I'll go with the hospital only because you know you have surgery there and things like that <clears throat> uh, more room for advancement too uh, questions to ask and what to do to stand out okay right, you don't want to ask too many basic questions like um, where do I center things like that things about anatomy like because because you could ask questions too that could make you look bad like man aren't you supposed to know that like aren't you in school um so like more questions like in depth you know what would you do in a trauma situation you know, situations where you gotta maybe think outside the box and 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 you know things that you won't find in books those are the type of questions you want to ask like about that individual's experience and, and what they could share about the field from their eyes and their experience you know those type of questions people enjoy most people love talking about themselves and in radiology they got plenty of stories you know everybody's got stories so you know just kind of dig for those if they're willing to talk about it and a lot of times you 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 click you click with those kind of things okay so my 2023 predictions right uh, again you know let me know if you have any predictions if you have any questions I think I got all of them but yeah it should be good i wish everybody a, a, a happy new year if you're not in the field yet if you're thinking about it go for it do your research around your area if you if you're in school right now and you're in the program stay competitive do not slack off now is not the time if you see other people slacking off because there's a lot of that going on right now um for whatever reason that's a good thing that that means you could just roll through this competition you know if they're even competition the biggest competitor is yourself you should be your own biggest competitor you should push yourself work as hard as you can learn as much as you can and just strive for more and more and more that's how you become successful 
um, in this not only in the in the field but for yourself you get to push yourself your limits and then you know doors could open up for you and if you see somebody slacking you know and they're a friend of yours maybe help motivate them you know but if you don't see any change then it is what it is but you keep pushing you keep digging all right appreciate your time we'll see y'all have a good one